name's Sam De Silva. Uh, I guess I'm a bit unique in the sense here. I'm not an IT director, although my title is head of technology and outsourcing. I'm a partner at a law firm. I advise clients, uh, customers looking to procure IT, doing outsourcing, and then also advise suppliers. Uh, my name's Greg Swift. I'm the CIO for Grant Thornton, UK LLP. Uh, we're financial advisors and uh, accountants. Uh, I'm CIO for the UK firm, and we have a global network. Uh, my name's Matthew Finney. I'm the CTO at Interroot. Interroot is a provider of basically infrastructure, so IT infrastructure, network, <coughs> computing, this kind of thing. Um, are across Europe and in 125 countries globally now. Hi, I'm Chris Gregory. I was the IT director for UK for Bacardi. Obviously, the UK perspective is a little bit, so I have small amount of financial responsibility. Um, if you don't know Bacardi, you should go to the bar. Um, we also make others too. So if you like, you don't like Sapphire or Grey Goose, you should have a look at some of those. Is that the alcohol break? I'm Phil Paddock. I'm the global CIO of Specsavers. You should have gone to. Uh, I also <laughs> got, I'm also the tutor's job for the, for the company as well. Thanks, Phil. These are spec saver glasses. So Quite right. Yeah. So there you go. Two, oh, so two for one. Here's a from, French, 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 French connection, sorry. <laughs> that's Don and That's, that's spec savers. Oh. Good. Well, I've had, I've had the for, good fortune to sit through the morning's presentations. Uh, and there's one theme, regardless of which angle that the presentation was coming from, of digital, digital disruption, customer experience, changing the speed of IT. Uh, and... Uh, it, it, was, it surprised me that the, uh, the consistency of the issues that have come through. So, first question I'd like to, to just put to the panel is, so, so why is digital different? Is it different? Is it just another IT strategy and we're just being hyped up about it? Or is there something specifically different? And um, Chris, I'll put the question to you. Give us your thoughts. It's a... Uh, it's an interesting one, actually. I, I sat, sat through the same sessions this morning. I kept running into Myron this morning because I was sitting in all the sessions. And I was actually thinking to myself, my God, every session is talking about this. What, the, what am I going to say that is kind of value-add or unique? And actually, what I did, because I thought, maybe I can't really add much value, but what I did is I went and nicked an agenda for the CMO event. I don't know if anyone else did that. Anyone else do that? It's quite hard to get one, but they police them outside very carefully. So I had to ask very nicely, probably offer some of my products in order to get it. So I got myself an agenda for the uh, CMO event, and I thought, how similar are the events? So the first session was random acts of marketing to strategic marketing, working alongside CIOs to, on the IT agenda. That's the first session in the CMO event. The second session was digital marketing strategies versus digital silos, how to make better use of digital in order to make money. Third session was marketing like a startup, learning from the digital disruptors, how can we be more like Twitter, Facebook, Google, Apple, etc. For I won't go on, because literally every single session is the same basic session as well. So not only is every session that we've done here talking <coughs> about digital, every session that they've done as well is talking about digital. Um, which I think is probably the most interesting insight. In fact, it's probably not an IT problem in the first place. What it is, is an industry disruptor, first and foremost. And the question I think is what is the role of us lot in that, um, perhaps what's interesting is the CMOs aren't sitting there trying to be CIOs, by the way. That would be far too boring. Mm -hmm. They're also not trying to be CDOs, as far as they're concerned, they already are. Phil, Phil you spoke about uh, IT leadership that was needed. Uh, and uh, I, I think you were taking a different lens in terms of, you know, this is a leadership thing that we can actually do something about. What's your, what's your thoughts? Yeah, so I said it earlier, I said it again. I think, I think digital for the IT industry, we're using it like the Millennium Bug. You know, to frighten. You know, so if you go to a board and say you don't have a digital strategy, they think on the Me Too base they better go and get one because everybody else has one. Yeah. If I give Specsavers as a great example, I inherited Specsavers' digital strategy, uh, which you know was very similar to all the other retailers that we were competing against. But just look at us. You know, we don't want any more customers to come to our stores. We can't cope with the ones we have. We don't want customers to come to our stores inside every two years because your eyes don't medically change, so we will buy glasses. Um, so. What's the digital strategy going to do again? And we're not going to go online because obviously going into a store and being checked is part of what we're about. So because when we brief the media companies, digital companies, write our strategy, we're, that's not a digital strategy. We can't write one of those. So the answer to me is actually digital is not the great answer that most boards think it is. You've got to find the augmentation of what you do internally or externally to real customers. 
and digitalise it to the point you have to. Mm. Um, and people get very lost. I've been, in, I've sat in boards as a noise director quite a few recently, where the digital strategy presented, and actually, it's just a web front end strategy, missing the whole point. Digitalisation actually starts at the systems of legacy, the heritage systems, right at the very back, systems of record, right the way through to the ease of the customer. And I think we have too much me too is going on. And IT, CIO, I think you should stand up and tell you. And do you think we could be making the same mistakes all over again? I think we are. I think in two or three years' time, CEO is going to go, what did I spend all that money on again? What's all that expensive stuff I have? Has it really actually, or has it just cannibalised my own industry and my own business, or has it indeed given me extra marginal benefit? You ask some of the big retailers where they are, they're deeply regretting where they've actually gone to on a digital strategy. Mm. Okay, thank you. I, I, I think a simpler way to think about digital may be, because we've gone, if you think the industry we're in, the delivery of infrastructure, and just an inevitable digitisation, it's just, for us, digitisation should simply mean um, e efficiency, right? You're just, and there is a very good point here. Um, I always use beer as the, the example of something that went down a particular road, if you like, a digital strategy, getting bigger and bigger and more and more efficient, and then blokes in sheds around the corner started making craft beer. Now, that doesn't fit the efficiency model. That starts saying something completely different. I think for most organisations, us and others we see, is, is digital simply means that you've got to you've got to eliminate the inefficiencies, and or if you use the American expression um, in telecoms, the Googleification of your business, right? Who are the sort of the bastion of a digital strategy because they're almost a, not quite a perfect uh, method of making money, but pretty close. And that's what you've got to think is, is, is have you got optimal access to your market? You know, your, your point, Phil, is that you want people to come into your business. From an intro perspective, we like, you know, at some level, if you think about it, and businesses like us is you're looking for the customer who is informed understands what they want um, we eliminate the need for them to make a decision that they can't change so you you make the to use that horrible word frictionless um, access to the market you make it as simple as you can in as appropriate a way as you can within the business you're in and the same with your supply chain be it the way that for instance why is cloud such an intrinsic part of it for someone like us and for the delivery of infrastructure because at a technical silicon sort of efficiency level, it is a blindingly simple way and efficient way of consuming silicon resources, which is fundamentally the one thing that is you're actually gaining efficiencies and innovation off. The rest of it, power, people, um, real estate, are either static or going up. So I think digital has got us, you know, we've characterized it in different ways. You know, I, my background way back when is semiconductors. So for me, digital was always the grand compromise, right? I started in the rarefied world of mixed signal semiconductors where we did beautiful things with complex processes. And then big hunking lumps of DSP came along and just obliterated it in a sort of brute force, but very cheap and efficient way. And I think digital has got to be relevant to your business. To Phil's point, there's no point in going out and saying, right, we're going to digitize everything. When the product you're selling is something where a customer has to come in and touch it, feel it, you know, and Let change it. Build on that point and maybe put it to put to you, Greg. I mean, you're a people business, trying to provide financial advice. How does how, why is digital different uh, for you this time round? I think it's I think it's back to the basics around building value, whether that be internal value or external value. You know, digital started off in you know earliest times, and we started to move to the <clears throat> paperless office, right? That's my sort of recollection of when digital started to to, to sort of gain as a, as a term, digital this, digital that. So for us, it's given an opportunity to um, not just pick up what we've done before and turn it into a digital format, but actually to look at it, as a couple of people have said, around enhanced business process mm -hmm. and also around enhancing our engagement with our clients. Mm. That's probably the key. You know, how can we make that stickier? And I think experience shows, certainly in our business, it's about the more contact we have, quality contact, whether that be face-to-face, -face, which you can't do practically, um, you know, it, it, all the time. But you can have that interaction with the client. Mm. And they want, we want them to see that coming to us is of value, and we'll give them something back. So we keep very much there as a trusted advisor, not somebody they go to for a specific engagement mm. uh, that they might look to do. So, so staying with a kind of a, 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 a service of people to people thing, moving on to you, Sam, I mean, what does 